Hi everyone, this is Dr. Neha Khurke and welcome once again to another case discussion in Zomio classroom. The case that we are going to discuss today is a very interesting case of the neurological variety. Before I begin with the case history and the discussion, I would request all of you to have a note paper and a pen with you so that you can note down or jot down all the characteristics that you feel are there in the case as well as the totality and in the end we will compare the two and see what was the outcome of the case. So let's start. This is a case of Alzheimer's with OCD in a 60 year old woman. Interesting right? We're starting now. So this is the case of a 60 year old lady, wife of a doctor who came with complaints of weakness of memory. She was accompanied by her daughter and her husband who is a physician in the United Kingdom. So here is the ODP of the case or the origin, duration and progress of the case. Everything was all right till one day about three months back her sister that is the patient's sister came to visit her along with her husband. They were sitting and chatting and generally were having a great time when suddenly her brother-in-law that is her sister's husband had a cardiac arrest and expired within a span of a few hours. And this event was a major shock for the patient. Her husband said that it was around that time that she started forgetting things. She started forgetting day-to-day -day events. But her memory for events of the past were absolutely clear. She was always confused and always muddled in different kind of situations. Her daughter said that she would go to the washroom again and again every half hour and would wash her underwear every time. She would wash, iron, change, wash, iron and this cycle would continue throughout the day every single day for the past three months. So we come to look at her physical genitals. Before that, let me do a short recap again of her case history. Here is a patient who is suffering from weakness of memory since the past three months. And this began after her brother-in-law passed away very suddenly from a cardiac arrest and she received a major shock because of this. Although she would forget the recent or the day-to-day -day events and would get muddled, her memory of past events was absolutely clear. Another very peculiar symptom of the patient was that she constantly was washing her underwear and changing it every half an hour and this was happening throughout the day. Now looking at her physical generals, this is what we see. She has a ravenous appetite, always must eat food on time. As far as thirst goes, she had 9 to 10 glasses of water per day. No specific desires or aversions when it came to food and drink. There was an increased urge to pass urine or a frequent urination. No complaints while passing stool. Perspiration was moderate, non-offensive and non-staining. Sleep was good, sound. Thermally, this patient could be categorized as a hot patient. I hope that you are noting down all the important characteristics that you feel on a piece of paper 
or in a notebook because this will be very helpful once we start with the case discussion. Now let us look at her other mental symptoms. She was extremely particular about tidiness and cleanliness. Alright, now this is her case history. How do we go about solving this case and giving the remedy to the patient? The first step is case analysis. And in case analysis, the first thing that we do is we extract the totality of the symptoms. If you remember, in the previous case discussions that we have had in uh, Zomio classroom, I had explained what exactly is the totality. Basically, it is a harmonious correlation of the physical as well as the mental characteristics of the patient. The symptoms that make up the individual and make him different from everyone else is the totality. So here in this case, what will be those symptoms? I hope that you have noted down your totality for this patient. Let's compare. So these are the symptoms that we took for the totality in this patient. The first was obviously forgetfulness because this was the chief complaint. Now let's get specific when it comes to the second symptom that we have taken. She is forgetful about recent day-to-day -day events only. Now this is a peculiar characteristic of her chief complaint. The third symptom that we will take is the ailment from which this particular chief complaint has arisen. So ailments from death of a near and dear one. This is a characteristic causation. Understand, not everyone becomes forgetful after they receive the shock of such kind. But for this patient, this was extremely peculiar and characteristic to her, which is why we have taken the chief complaint also in the totality as well as the ailment. Moving on to the next symptom that we have considered is confused memory or confusion. The next is desire to wash underwear. Now this is a PQRS symptom. This is something very, very unusual, which is why we have considered this symptom in the totality. The next is fastidious. Now, see the beauty of this case. She is forgetful. She has compulsions and obsessions, but she has not forgotten that she needs to be clean and tidy. And this is why we have taken this particular symptom. Then we come to appetite that is increased to the point of being ravenous. She has to eat something whenever she feels even slightly hungry. And the last symptom that we have taken is frequent urination, which is a characteristic physical particular for her. Now in this, let me interject that she has not been given any other medication up till now in these three months. So there is nothing that can justify this frequent urination. We usually have a lot of um, allopathic drugs which have this side effect of frequent urination and canine appetite but because this patient has not or had never received any kind of medication. We take these two symptoms as being peculiar to her personality, as being peculiar to her body and physical attributes. Okay, so this is my totality and um, you can write down or you can enter in the comments what was your totality so that you know we can compare 
the difference between the totality that we have considered and the totality that you have taken. I'm sure that most of the symptoms that you must have taken in your totality are all present here. Okay, now this was step one. The next step in case analysis is how we convert each of these symptoms taken in the totality in the form of rubrics. Alright, now this is going to be very interesting. So, watch carefully. This is how we have converted the symptoms into rubrics. Let's take the first symptom of the totality, which is forgetfulness. Now, this is pretty straightforward. The rubric is present as forgetfulness in the mind chapter of the complete repertory. The second is forgetful about recent events or day-to-day -day situations. We converted this into the rubric forgetfulness facts for recent. All you have to do is go to the mind chapter of the complete repertory and under forgetfulness you can study all the subrubrics that are there. I know that for a lot of uh, you who are watching us right now, it is a little difficult to know where exactly the rubric is present, whether such a rubric or a subrubric is actually present or not. So for this, we have different ways in our software in Zoomio through which you can arrive at the perfect rubric that you want for your patient. And I will show them to you shortly. But for now, let's look at the conversion of the rubrics. The third rubric or the third symptom rather that was converted into the rubric is ailments from death of a near and dear one, which we converted to complete mind death ailments from aggravate loved ones of. Next is confusion or confused memory. Again, a pretty straightforward conversion. Memory confused from the mind chapter. The next is desire to wash underwear. Now, this was a rubric that we did not know whether it was present in any of the repertories. So, we just typed in the search. I typed wash and underwear and to my utter surprise, I found this rubric in the complete repertory. So, this rubric is bathing, washing, desire for, always, underwear her. The next rubric we took was mind fastidious. Again, an absolutely straightforward conversion. Appetite ravenous was found in the stomach chapter of the complete repertory as appetite ravenous canine excessive. And the final characteristic particular that we took in our totality of frequent urination was found in the chapter bladder of the complete repertory as urination frequent. Let me repeat all the rubrics again. I would request you to note down all these rubrics because I will be explaining how you can search for every rubric from Zomio. So, I am repeating the rubrics again. Complete mind forgetfulness. Complete mind forgetfulness facts for recent. Complete mind, death ailments from aggravates loved ones of. Complete mind, memory confused. Complete mind, bathing washing, desire for, always, underwear her. Complete mind, fastidious. Complete stomach. Appetite, ravenous, 
canine excessive complete bladder urination frequent so this is the list of rubrics from our totality that we now need to repertorize and see which is the final remedy that comes that we can give to this patient all right so now i'm sure that you have noted down the totality of symptoms and the rubrics that we have taken and now i am going to show you how you can record each rubric that is there in this totality using different techniques or ways from compact zomio 3.0 windows version all right so if you remember the first symptom or the first rubric in the totality it was forgetfulness i am now going to show you the first and the most usual way in which you can search for and record a rubric and this is what we call the classic way of recording rubrics the classic way of recording rubrics is exactly the way where you would take a physical repertory open the book look for the chapter and search for the rubric the difference here is that instead of a physical book it is the software from where you can jump directly to the rubric of your choice let's start from the screen this is the home screen that you are seeing we go to the repertory module this is the repertory module when i click on the repertory module i see different features or different options i will first start with the classic view and this is the first way in which i will be telling you how to search for and record a rubric i click on classic view this is the screen that opens on the left hand side here i can see the list of repertories that i have in the software now if i want to search for a rubric in a particular chapter of a particular repertory i just have to go in that repertory and look for the rubric in that chapter right now the mind chapter of the complete repertory is open by default and this is exactly where i want to look for my first rubric the first way in which i can look for this rubric is something called as a level search now here you can see three boxes search second level third level fourth level i will start searching in the second level once i start typing in the word forgetful the software will directly jump to that particular rubric in this mind chapter so i will start typing all right so the moment i have typed f o r g i have directly drill down and jumped to that rubric forgetfulness and this is the rubric that i want for my patient so now if i want to record this rubric i can do it by a couple of ways either i click on record symptom present in the ribbon up here or i click on record present here or all i need to do is double click on forgetfulness now the symptom or the rubric has got recorded in my repertorization sheet to confirm whether it is recorded i just have to see this icon here which is the icon of the repertorization sheet under which the number 1 is written this means that this rubric has been recorded 
Now let's go on to the second rubric in our totality, which is forgetfulness facts for recent. Again, we will be searching this using the classic way. We have already come to forgetfulness. Now, all I have to do is type in the subrubric. The subrubric goes into third level. So, I will type facts. And again, now the moment I type FAC, the cursor has jumped to that subrubric. Forgetfulness, facts for. But I need to be more specific whether the facts are of the past or are they recent. They are recent. And that is why I will click on recent. And this is the rubric that I would like to record. Complete mind forgetfulness facts for recent. I double click and the rubric is recorded. At any point, if I want to see the remedies that are there in this rubric, all I have to do is look here in this box where I will see that there are 36 remedies mentioned in different gradations under this rubric. The next rubric that we want to record is death ailments from aggravate loved ones. Now, within this classic search itself, I want to show a different type of search which is called as the quick search. Now, this quick search is useful for those physicians who are not exactly sure where the rubric is present. Whether it is a second level rubric or a third level rubric or a sub rubric of even those. So when I click on quick search within this particular chapter, I can look for the rubric anywhere at any level. I'll show you. I click on quick search. A pop-up opens. I just need to type certain keywords of that rubric. So I type ailments, death and as you can see I already start getting rubric references or rubric ideas. Okay, so it is ailments, death and loved ones. So I have already got two rubric ideas for this. Death ailments from aggravate loved ones of is what I am looking for. I click on it and here is the rubric in the mind chapter of the complete repertory. Remember the quick search option is only going to search for the keywords in the chapter that is currently open. It is not going to search into any chapter of any other repertory or any other chapter of the complete repertory. Okay, here is the rubric that we would like. Complete mind, death ailments from, aggravate, loved ones of. This is the rubric that I want to record. So I just click on record symptom and this rubric has now been recorded. Now let us look at how we can record the other rubrics that are present in this totality. We have already seen two ways in which we can search for and get the rubric that we want. I'd now like to show you a different way, a very useful way especially for beginners, especially for those physicians who would just like to get quick results when it comes to rubric search. So I am going to show you the next few rubrics using what we call the repertory search. 
The repertory search is a general search engine which will help you to look for the keywords of your rubrics from every repertory, every chapter that is present in the software in Zomio. So as an example, let me show you the next rubric. The next rubric is memory confused. So here in the search bar, in the search symptoms bar, I type in memory confused. Now here I get different options based on the letters that I have typed. I will select confused and press enter. Now the software within a second has searched for me and given me references for memory confused. I now have a total of 20 references. I will record and select the first reference which is memory confused. This rubric has now been recorded. Let me look now for the next rubric. So which is the next rubric in my list? The next rubric is bathing, washing, desire for underwear. So let me type in washing underwear enter and I have only one reference only one rubric for this particular uh, for these keywords that I have typed which is bathing washing desire for always underwear her and now I will I have recorded this rubric let me look for another rubric using the same search engine of repertory search. My next rubric in the list is fastidious. I select fastidious and press enter. And these are the references that I get. I have 26 references for fastidious. I will select the first one containing the maximum number of remedies, which is from the complete repertory. I have now recorded this rubric as well. We still have two more rubrics to go two more rubrics to be recorded and now I will show you another way, a fourth way in which I can record these two rubrics. That way is the quick case record which I can find in the repertory module. When I click on the repertory module, here is the feature quick case record. When I click on quick case record, this is the window that opens. On the left hand side, you see certain chapters. Now the purpose of a quick case record is that you can record the rubric directly from here using patient language. So every time it may not be possible for you to convert the symptom into the rubric or you may find it a bit difficult especially for new homeopaths or doctors who are just starting out in their homeopathic practice. For them this feature is very useful. All you have to do is look for the symptom in the patient language in this particular feature and you will get your answer and I'll show you how. The next rubric that we want to record is appetite ravenous which is actually an increased appetite. So what we do is we go in the relevant chapter which is the chapter on stomach. When I select stomach these are the different subcategories that open. 
I want the category of appetite, which is here, the first subcategory. In this first subcategory, you see many options. You need to select the option that is relevant for your patient. Now, for our patient, it was an increased appetite. So, I can either check this box. When I check this box, a rubric will directly get recorded in my repertorization sheet. But in case, I'd like to see the rubrics that have been linked to this word. I can select this and then click show all rubrics. When I select show all rubrics, a window opens in which I can see all the seven rubrics that have been linked to increased appetite. Now I want this rubric because this is more specific to my patient which is appetite, ravenous, canine, excessive. I select record symptom and now this rubric has been recorded. Now let me show you the last rubric in this list again using the quick case record feature which is urination frequent. Now I will go to the chapter urinary system. Again under this I have a lot of different subcategories. I will now select the symptom that is most specific to my patient. I will look for that under urination and here I find the reference frequent. Again, if I want to see the rubrics that are there under this symptom, I have to select it and then go to show all rubrics. I see five references or five rubrics that have been linked to this symptom. I take the first one, complete bladder urination frequent and I record it. The rubric has now been recorded and now I have completed recording all the rubrics from the totality for this patient. Let us now have a look at the repertorization sheet. To view the repertorization sheet, we need to click on this icon here. Alright, this now is my repertorization sheet where I have recorded 8 rubrics. Now as you can see, for the 8 rubrics that have been recorded, there are 864 remedies. A huge range of remedies for you to choose from. How do you finally decide which remedy you need to give to your patient? So for this, we have something called as filters. The repertorization filters help us to refine the search or to refine the results to a select group of remedies which can then finally help us to decide which is the final remedy that we would like to give to this patient. So let us go in for the first filter, our most popular filter, which is the remedy property filter. All the filters have been displayed here at the bottom of the repertorization sheet. I click on this icon. This icon will now open a column in which I select the first option that is remedy property filter. When I click on remedy property filter, this is the box that opens. Now, whatever I would like to select for my patient can be selected from here. For my patient, I would like to consider first her thermal modality, which was, if you remember, she was a hot patient. 
So I will select hot. Her appetite was increased. So I select increased appetite. Now for my third selection, the logic is that she is somebody who has OCD and who is showing the characteristics of Alzheimer's disease as well. So obviously I need a remedy that will be deep acting as well as acting on both the mental as well as the physical plane. For that I need a polycrest remedy. So I will select from here only polycrest. And now let me see the result that I get. Okay, so now from 864, my list has come down to 36 remedies. All right, from these 36 remedies also, if I want to be absolutely sure, which is that remedy which I would like to give to the patient, I can apply another filter as well. So for the same repertorial analysis, I can apply multiple filters at the same time to keep getting more and more and more concise and comprehensive results. So now we will be applying the second filter which is the cross repertorization filter. The icon for the cross repertorization filter is here. We click on it. And now we will cross or we will select the most important rubrics for this case. For this case, the first most important rubric is the chief complaint, which is complete mind forgetfulness. I select it. The second would be complete mind forgetfulness facts for recent. The third would obviously be the causation. Complete mind death ailments from aggravate loved ones of. And the fourth rubric that I would like to take is her characteristic symptom of fastidiousness. So I mark fastidiousness. Now these are the four rubrics that I would like to cross and finally see which is the remedy or remedies that come under this. I click now on OK. And now my list has drilled down to just three remedies. Natrimure, Sulphur and medurinum. I now have to decide which is the remedy for my patient. Now in this what I can do the final thing that I fall back on is my materia medica which are our source books. We also have very beautiful keynotes that we have compiled from different source books made by different authors which can show us the most characteristic or the most important symptoms of that remedy. Let us have a look at the keynotes of Natramure. All I have to do is right click on Natramure. A drop down opens in which I have certain features that I can go to, I select Keynotes. When I select Keynotes, this is the window that opens. The Keynotes contain the most characteristic symptoms of that remedy, all compiled together and very, very easily available for you to read. All right, so now when we view the Keynotes of the remedy, Look at the first line that is there in this remedy. Prolonged, deep, 
silent grief or sorrow this is where we catch the main theme that is running through the patient this is what has given rise to all of the symptoms that she has been suffering from since the past 3 months and now with this alone we know that natrum mur is the remedy that we need to give for our patient so we are now decided that natrum mur is the remedy that we need to give to the patient but friends you know that more than the remedy it is the potency that is important in determining how the patient will get better now how do we decide the potency in which we need to give the remedy to the patient well we have a very beautiful feature in zoomio called the potency selector guide which will help you to arrive at the perfect potency that you can give to the patient let me show you from where you can access this feature and how you can use it this feature is available in the utility module of the software i click on utility and i see different features available for me one of those features is the potency selector guide i click on it the potency selector opens up a new window in which i just have to select certain parameters that are there in my patient and then i can finally arrive at the potency in which i need to prescribe natrium let me select the parameters that are ideal for my patient i select adult good sleep good nutrition now once i feel that i am done selecting from this window i click next i get more options to select from let me select characteristic symptoms here and now let me see the result that this software gives me so the result that i have got is that i should be giving this patient a high potency and in infrequent repetition so the potency is more than 200 that i should be giving the patient and in infrequent repetition so now i am absolutely clear in my head that i want to give this patient natrum mur in a high potency this was the prescription that was finally given to the patient natrum mur 1m was prescribed in a single dose let us see what happened now surprisingly in the follow ups we saw that progress was not encouraging with even repeated doses of natrum mur 2 months after trial with natrum mur we realized that we needed to review the case because the patient was not improving now when a case review is done we need to impartially see what are the things that we may have missed in this patient or that we may not have considered as important enough in this patient and we saw the one symptom that we did not consider as extremely important and that was the constant desire to wash her underwear this was an extremely peculiar symptom for the patient 
Now let us go back to Zomio and see where this rubric was present and which was or which were the remedies under this rubric. Let us type in again in the search bar washing underwear and we have only one reference rubric for the keywords that we typed and that rubric is complete mind bathing washing desire for always underwear her and there is only one remedy in that rubric which is syphilinum. Interesting isn't it? From natremure we now shifted to syphilinum but we still had to confirm whether this is actually the remedy that we need to give to the patient. What we need to understand is that syphilinum is a very very powerful nosote and we need to be absolutely sure before prescribing such a remedy. Let us confirm if there was anything or anything else that is there in syphilinum which was there in our patient as well. So from here I select syphilinum and from this ribbon here, I select key notes. Again, referencing back to the key notes of syphilinum. Because the mental sphere or the mental picture of this patient was very strong. Let us read the mind of syphilinum. Impulse to wash hands. Compulsive checking and here is where I found another very very important symptom of the patient part of his chief complaint. Forgetfulness does not remember faces, name, events etc. but remembers things previous to his illness which means that there is no memory or there is weak memory for recent events but past events are remembered perfectly and this is what is there in our patient as well. Here is how the pieces of the puzzle fit in perfectly and we are now sure that we can give syphilinum to this patient. Let us go back and see what happened. On reviewing the prescription as we saw we then prescribed syphilinum 200 in single dose. Have a look at her follow-up. Her washing mania became better by 20 percent. Her loquacity went down her confusion went down. She became more active. She started making tea, which means that she started slowly started easing into her daily routine on her own. Her sleep was very peaceful. The frequency of her urination also went down. Now, in this case, do you think that we needed to repeat the remedy? Not at all. We just put her on placebo. The next follow-up was even more hopeful. Her washing mania was much better. The patient had stopped talking unnecessary things. Memory was improving which was her chief complaint. The urination frequency became much better and she stopped washing her undergarments. Again, only SL or placebo was prescribed to her. Her subsequent follow-ups 
made us very happy because she was consistently improving on the one dose of cefalinum that we had given. You can see how much better she had become over time. After two months, she again came back with slight confusion, some disorientation, but we could not elicit any cause. So we repeated a dose of cefalinum 200. The subsequent follow-up, she was much, much better. So at the end of this, what is the learning that we get from this case, which is the most important takeaway of this case? Selection of the correct potency with guarded repetition is vital. Such a deep acting medicine, if repeated injudiciously, can produce severe aggravation. The art of prescribing here was based on a characteristic mental symptom which gets to the core of the remedy as well as the patient. So here is where we end this case discussion. I really hope that you have learned a lot after this case discussion and if you have any questions with regard to the case or to the software, please feel free to comment or ask us and we will do our best in answering any of your queries and questions. Till then, goodbye and see you next week.